I'm John Pacini, and this is Heart Rhythm TV. And I'm very pleased today to begin a, a new feature on the Heart Rhythm TV channel called Hands-On Electrophysiology, where we'll be reviewing how to do new electrophysiologic procedural techniques. And we're very excited today to have Dr. Parikh Sharma from Yash, Rush University to review left bundle branch pacing. Welcome, Dr. Sharma. Thank you, John. Thanks for the very kind invitation. So left bundle pacing is extremely um, talked about and popular right now. Um, it's, it's really all we're talking about at Duke in our lab. Can you uh, tell us in the audience why left bundle branch pacing? Why is everyone so excited about it? Yeah, that's a very important question. I think uh, as we're all well aware, uh, traditional right ventricular pacing has its associated challenges with increased risk of heart failure, hospitalizations, incident atrial fibrillation, and also associated mortality. We know that his bundle pacing, which is another form of conduction system pacing, has demonstrated an improvement in some of these outcomes. But when you compare anatomically, as you see in this slide, his bundle versus the left bundle branch. The left bundle branch is a much bigger fan-like trunk, as you can see in both of these in panel A. And that allows for lead placement at a much larger zone, thereby potentially improving the success rate. Also, because this lead is placed within the interventricular septum, it allows for better R-ways, better thresholds for capture, as well as lack of atrial oversensing and some of the other challenges we've seen with his bundle pacing. That's the reason this is gaining more popularity as a form of conduction system pacing. Well, that makes uh, a lot of sense, both physiologically and from a mechanical and operational perspective. So um, tell us in the viewership here at Heart Rhythm TV, how do we go about actually doing the procedure? What are the, the key fundamental steps and what we need to know? Right, so uh, as we get started and how do we perform these procedures, it's important for the audience to have a key reference. This is the beginner's guide to permanent left bundle branch pacing by Dr. Wong and Dr. Vijay Raman that really detailed some of these steps. In essence, just to review some of these really quickly, I think the first and the foremost uh, thing we need to do if we want to do this right is to identify in an RAO projection fluoroscopically the his bundle location with your lead and your sheath. So as you see here in the first panel on the left, you identify the his potential with a HV interval of 65 milliseconds. You then draw an imaginary line in an RAO projection from that his location to the apex of the RV. And about a centimeter or two along that line, further distally into the ventricle, is generally the area of the intervent muscular interventricular septum where we try to target the left bundle branch region. The reason for that is because anatomically, the left bundle branch takes off a little bit lower on the left side of the septum compared to the right bundle branch, which is more superior and anterior. And finally, as you see, if you get to that area and you start pacing, you see that typical W pattern in V1 that has been traditionally described by Dr. Wong and his colleagues. We're also seeing more that two and three and AVR and AVL generally are more discordant in areas that are more successful. And the presence or absence of the W pattern is not necessarily critical to successful left bundle branch pacing. We then start moving on to adjusting things. So here in step three, you see that it is very critical to adjust the angle. So the angle at which the left bundle branch pacing lead is ad advanced through the septum is way different than the his bundle lead. And it is more towards a two o'clock position in an audio projection. You then pull your sheath back so that there is no uh, bunching forward between the sheath and the septum and the, the sheath and the lead are aligned in one straight line. And then you start fixing the lead with rapid rotations as you see in this video with me rapidly rotating the lead with two hands and simultaneously fluoroscopically you see the advancement of the lead into the interventricular septum in an RAO projection. While we're doing this, the first five or six turns are extremely rapid, and then you start carefully monitoring your lead impedance and paced morphologies before you continue to advance the lead further with careful, slow, purposeful rotations. 
this is a busy slide, but this is really the critical element to assessing whether or not you've reached the critical area, which is the area of the left-sided conduction system and how far into the septum your lead is advanced. So as you advance from panel A, B, C, and D, the lead is getting deeper and deeper into the interventricular septum. And at each point, you pace at different outputs. Here you see at five volts and eight volts. And at eight volts, you're seeing that you have a QR pattern while at five volts, you still have the W pattern. And the lateral wall activation time, which is typically measured from the stimulus to the peak of V5 or V6, is longer at the lower outputs and gets much shorter at the higher outputs. As you advance all the way to the area of the left corner branch, you notice that the lateral wall activation times are fixed at no matter what the pacing output is, and you have a separation between the local uh, ventricular electrogram suggesting selective left corner branch capture at a lower output and non-selective left corner branch capture with septal plus left corner branch capture at a higher output. And so this is a transition between non-selective left corner branch pacing and selective left corner branch pacing. So this is critical to understanding advancement. And as you continue to go through this through the interventricular septum, your impedance will tend to rise and then start going down by about 100 to 150 ohms as you start getting closer to the LV endocardium. So this is the most important and the most critical step with assessing the depth of the lead and to assess left corner branch capture. And finally, I think it's a very good practice to try to perform um, you know, uh, sheath and geography so you can assess how deep is the lead into the interventricular septum. Typically, this, the helix is 1.8 millimeters and the distance between the tip and the ring electrode is nine millimeters. So that helps you gauge knowing the septal thickness, how deep you are into the septum and how further you may need to go to make contact with the left corner branch. I think these are just a very brief overview of the key steps to left corner branch pacing. I would recommend that the audience read the in-depth paper to understand more nuances to this technique. Uh, this has been uh, fantastic, Dr. Sharma. I mean, incredible visualization and, and really helpful guidance for folks who are interested in, in learning and employing this technique in their practice. Um, you're obviously a, a clear expert uh, in this procedure. So I wanna ask you if there were a top three tips you had for uh, our audience here at Heart Rhythm TV about left bone branch pacing, what would those top three tips be? I think uh, the number one tip would be understand your fluoroscopic anatomy and how it relates to the conduction system in both the RAO and the LAO projection. That's the most important thing. The second thing that's extremely important is understand the variations in that particular patient. Is there any septal scarring? What is the septal thickness that is present? And then follow every step that we've reviewed here very methodically and meticulously and diligently during the procedure, trying not to skip through steps because that's when you end up with, with issues or trouble. And finally, uh, always carefully assess the lead depth and utilize all the published criteria to ensure that you truly have left-sided conduction system capture versus left septal capture alone. That's great. Well, again, this has been highly informative uh, and I know the Heart Rhythm TV viewership will really appreciate uh, this and find this video incredibly useful. I want to thank uh, everyone who has joined us for this uh, special first uh, of the hands-on EP channel. We'll be bringing many, many, many more episodes to you. And we hope you have uh, a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks for joining us here on Heart Rhythm TV.